Slepter. Uh, I work here in the painting conservation studio at the Lang Art Gallery. Um, and this is the centre for all of the painting conservation for the whole of the Tyne and Weir Museum services. Conservation is really the, the modern um, way that we look at restoration, what used to be called restoration. The, the, the difference is that with restoration, um, the emphasis was on making things look as good as new, as restoring them. Um, whereas with conservation, the idea is to try and preserve as much as possible. We wouldn't get the exhibitions that we do if we weren't capable of proving that we can look after and take care of very high value and delicate objects, which is what conservators are trained to do. And we also would be able to spot if there was any weaknesses or damage that needs to be um, pointed out to people. One of the main things in conservation, and one of the main differences maybe between conservation and restoration, is that anything that we do um, as conservators, we have to be able to undo. So if we use paints, we need to be able to take the paints off again. If we need fillers or we put um, extra canvas on to fill holes, then we need to be able to remove it again. Because in the past, um, quite a lot of the restoration that's been done to paintings has been quite destructive. It's good to have a scientific background in, in to, to, so that you know you don't have to you don't have to memorize every single chemical combination but just understanding that what reacts with what is really useful well the materials we use is dictated totally by what materials are in the painting this is actually a um, it's like an art, architect's view of what the center of Newcastle would be like before they redeveloped it so before they did all the Grays Street and everything development. This was, this was um, Carmichael, who's a local artist. This was his view of what, what the cent city centre could look like. So it's quite a strange one. So it looks quite familiar, but then when you actually look closely, you can't pinpoint where it is. It's, it's, it's got a lot of cracks within the paint film, which is what comes with age anyway. Things haven't been stored in perfect, steady conditions. Then what happens is the expansion and contraction of the canvas over time will cause the, pa the paint, at some point the paint will just crack. Once we've got it um, fixed, what we'll probably do is we'll probably do some more consolidation on it. There's a bit more varnish needs to come off, I think. As museums, we really are taking care of paintings for the public. This is, this is the public's collection, and if we don't make sure that we have the correct conditions, that we treat them in the right way, then they will be destroyed and we will lose our heritage, which would be a shame. Well, in our collections we have uh, some religious items that are only meant to be seen by men. Uh, there's some Australian Aboriginal items and those are in storage and the box they're in is clearly labelled saying that there is a, a restriction on these. But personally I wouldn't want to impose that on visitors and if a visitor wants to see those particular items I would leave the decision to them, obviously telling them that the original creators of those items intended them only for a male audience. We do, we do have items in the collection that are made from various kinds of animal products. I mean, we've got a lot of ivory material. Uh, for me, I think you've got to separate the fact that these are historical items made a long time ago and made by people who were hunting those animals for their livelihood and it's very different to modern day poachers who are killing those animals just for their ivory and are actually decimating the population. So I personally don't have a problem with the uh, old material we have out of ivory, but as a museum we do actually get given material that's been confiscated by customs, modern uh, elephant ivory and things like that. 
which I don't think we'd necessarily want to display. I think probably the most controversial things that I've had to deal with as a museum curator are human remains. Uh, we have to be very careful about people's sensitivities when we're putting human remains on display. And I think as a curator, we have, I have to think very hard about why I want to display human remains and how they should be displayed. Uh, one example is uh, we had a, an exhibit of Lindo Mann um, in 2009, and he's a bog body, so he's very, very well preserved. He's preserved in a peat bog. And when we displayed him, we took steps to be as sensitive as possible in how he was displayed. So he was uh, screened off from the rest of the gallery. And we made sure visitors were aware that they would be seeing human remains. The public reaction has largely been positive. Uh, most members of the public actually are interested in seeing the remains of people from the past. And one of the things I always try and tell people is that we don't actually know what people in the past would have wanted us to do with their human remains. We can't make assumptions on their behalf. Um, and some people in the past may have been very comfortable about having uh, their remains on display in a museum. Well, I think different people have different views about how the dead should be treated. Some people feel very strongly that you should leave uh, people who are dead undisturbed, you should uh, leave them buried uh, or wherever they were discovered. And I think that uh, is one of the main areas of controversy. And certainly with prehistoric human remains in this country, there are groups of people who feel we ought to be reburying a lot of those remains. The store houses the history collection from Discovery Museum. So we've got things in here from furniture and toys to dolls houses and objects found around the home. But everything in here relates to life in Tyneside. The mystery collection is a set of glass slides and they're all images of fairground scenes. There's everything from amazing animals to the people who work there, the crowds and um, tents being set up. We had no idea where any of the, the photos came from. We just found the boxes of the, the glass slides and we had them digitised, so we had no information about the donor or when the pictures were taken or where even. We used Flickr and uploaded them, and within days we got information back from a Mr Younger who was able to tell us that his great-grandmother was the lady with the elephant in the picture. He was also able to give us lots of other information about when the photographs were taken and where, and even the names of the workers involved. The collection's been hugely popular. We've had thousands of hits, hundreds of comments, and we've had some really valuable information given to us 